Should Scrum Master coach the product owner? Well, technically, Scrum Master is a role of a coach, so they need to understand all of the roles in Scrum and be able to coach the team, including the product owner. But then, are they really experts in what the product owners do? Well, no. So how can they coach a product owner if they don't have the expertise in it? This is an interesting discussion and an interesting debate that happened in my LinkedIn profile. One of the posts about the product owner, what kind of skills and knowledge they need and how a Scrum Master can coach them. So I thought that is going to be a great video idea where we can deep dive into how a Scrum Master can coach PO and whether they should do it at all. Let's get into the video to look into the details. Hey, it's Daria here. Welcome. In this video, as I said at the beginning, we will be looking into the role of the product owner, but actually from the point of view of a Scrum Master. So is the Scrum Master supposed to help the product owner if they're new, they don't know what to do, they still don't have the skills really to be able to be successful? Or should they not? Should we just by default think about the product owner as the role that where we need to hire someone who knows it already? Well, the reality is that we not always have an opportunity to hire someone who is already a great expert in what they do. And the same can happen with the Scrum Masters. Obviously, the best way for product owner, Scrum Master, or really any role like this to be more successful and get to the desired outcomes faster is to be mentored by someone in their role who has more experience and is able to share that those experiences with the more junior people. So Scrum Master should be mentored by a Scrum Master and the product owner should be mentored by the product owner. But now the language here is a little bit different. Is it coach or is it mentor? Because those two things are very different and they require a different approach and they also require different skills and knowledge in the domain that you are talking about with the person you coach or mentor. But before I jump into the video, if you like this kind of content, you want to learn more about Scrum Agile and just how you can build awesome teams, consider subscribing. It really helps the channel and helps me continue to create more content for you. And back to the video. But let's jump into the actual comments where that I received on my post and I will just kind of go over them. I have replied to quite a few of them, but I thought it makes sense to deep dive a bit better into those to, for me to help explain really my position and how I look at it, because I think it's, it is a very important topic really to look into. So let's jump in the LinkedIn profile. So here is my post, what knowledge and skills a product owner needs? How can a Scrum Master coach a new product owner? I'm working on a new guide and while I'm trying to make the list manageable, it keeps growing. Here are the topics I find extremely important to address with new product owners. And also the reason why I decided to actually post this is because someone reached out to me asking, hey, do you have a guide on how I can help my product owner be more effective and more successful? And I thought, yeah, why, why shouldn't I have a guide on this? That's why I'm working on it. But here are just a few things that I have mentioned product versus project. So it is important for a product owner to understand what the difference is between those two because they're a product owner, they're not a project manager. Then product owners, powers and accountability, really talking about their need for their decision power as well as the fact that they're accountable for the success of the product. Product definition, what's your product? Obviously, a product owner needs to understand what the product is, who the customer is, what is the product vision, all of those important topics product backlog. Obviously, the product owner needs to be able to transfer all of that knowledge they have around the product and what the customer wants through the product backlog. They need to be able to manage it. So that's an important skill and knowledge for them to have. Measuring success, value metrics. That kind of comes back to that product definition, but more specifically kind of looking into how do I know whether what I am delivering is actually valuable for my customers? 
very important uh, topic on the KPIs, OKRs, and all of those things. Planning delivery. Here is a, a topic that I thought would be very important for a product owner because the product owner needs to understand the planning in an empirical environment because it is different and needs to understand how to use agile approaches to estimation and forecasting to be able to plan ahead and communicate what the goals are, what the progress is to the stakeholders. And talking about the stakeholders, stakeholder management, obviously that's another important topic. The product owner is the person who is working with the stakeholders directly and they need to be able to translate what the stakeholders need or want into those product backlog items. And also they need to be able to kind of say no and manage different priorities. That is kind of the few topics that I highlighted. I didn't add anything else since I posted this, but this is basically the post that I added into my LinkedIn profile. My idea was actually getting some feedback on what other topics on knowledge and skill as a product owner needs to be successful. I have been having trouble getting those. However, a lot of people got stuck on the question that I asked at the very beginning. How can a Scrum Master coach a new PO? Let's look into the answers and kind of see where people are coming from. Here is one of the, uh, the answers. OMG, if the product owner doesn't know this, but has the position, I highly doubt the hiring process was valid. Scrum Master should coach the PO on some practices maybe, but definitely not how to do their job. Decision-making, what's the vision? What's the customer? Really? So clearly this person is really disagrees with what I had to say. Not, I guess, understanding what I was trying to say here, but uh, just to highlight what really I wanted to say. I'm not saying that the Scrum Master should be an expert and actually tell the product owner how to do their job. No, instead, I am talking about the practices. How can a Scrum Master share those practices? The Scrum Master is still there to help the product owner to understand that they need to have a product vision, that they need to have a clear understanding of their customer. And yes, the product owner might be put into this role without actually having that experience yet. We need to start somewhere, right? You might have a junior product owner in your team. And if this is the case, what are you going to do? You're going to go back to your manager and say, oh, no, we are not going to work with this person. Mm, really? You know how much time it's going to take for the company to hire someone new who has all of the experience possible. It, it is a really long process, so why not take the person who is already there and coach and teach them? Obviously, if you have someone else in the organization with the right qualifications, with the right um, experience in the product ownership, they should be there as a mentor. But as a Scrum Master, you still need to work with this person. And if you see any gaps in how they approach the situation, you should be helping them, right? So I think that is absolutely okay for a Scrum Master to share some of those practices and tell the people what to what they can use in order to make some of those decisions. Another thing, I think an important one here, what is said that decision-making, what? A Scrum Master telling the product owner how to make decisions? Well, yes. Uh, what I mean by this is a Scrum Master can share various techniques with the product owner on how to potentially prioritize and make decisions about their product backlog. But the Scrum Master is also there to coach them on things like saying no. Decision making is a skill and it takes people some time to really be able to make decisions in a situation of uncertainty where they don't have all the answers. And a new PO or even someone, sometimes even experienced product owners might not be comfortable with making quick decisions, but they have to. So the Scrum Master can definitely coach a product owner in decision making because decision making is not a product specific skill, right? So I think that is specifically this one even is an absolute yes. Why not? Isn't it exactly what the Scrum Master is there for? So just a few uh, notes on there. And I think that other people added some really good points in here. Um, and I'm not going to go through all of the replies here, really. 
I am going to send you the link to this post. Actually, I'm going to put the link in the description so that you can go and read through the comments. I think there are some really good conversations that are happening. Scrum Masters can help product owners understand their role and value and how they can best position for success overall in their career, free of specific contexts. I have helped many POs in this way and most were, were very grateful for the lifeline. So I think this is exactly what it is. It doesn't mean that you are there to know exactly what the person does, but you are there to support them. Think of it in the same way as I talked about in the previous video about the Scrum Master technical skills. You will maybe never, and maybe shouldn't, <laughs> you will never become actually the expert in what your developers, the developers on the team are doing, but it doesn't mean that you cannot coach them on how to be more effective. You can bring in various techniques and practices to them and maybe focus more on soft skills that they need to develop to be more successful, like creating good goals, uh, making decisions, maybe planning. Um, how can they work better as in and collaborate together? Bring in some of the practices like pair program and things like that. There are lots of things that a Scrum Master can do, both when they are coaching the developers and the product owners. Another thing here comes up, a Scrum Master should never coach a product owner or product manager. What that would not be ideal state. And as I said, uh, in my comment in reply, I said, well, coaching the product owner is literally the role of the Scrum Master. As I explained in the previous comment, it's true, right? And I think here where I would like to highlight the difference once again between teaching, coaching, and mentoring. Those are three different things. When we speak about coaching, coaching is really about helping drive the person in the right direction by asking them questions, but not actually giving them the solution. Coaching is about helping the person come up to the best solution themselves. And that means that you need to have a good understanding of the role and then be able to direct the person so that they come up with a solution based on their experiences and knowledge. You don't have to be an expert here. When you mentor someone, yes, you want to share your experiences. Or in the same way, teaching is very specific. Here's the knowledge you I have that I'm going to give to you. And in this case, it is still valid, I'd say, Scrum Master teaching the product owner, teaching various techniques and practices that could be useful. If you want to learn more about the difference between teaching, coaching, and mentoring, I do have a video talking specifically about that. I'm going to link it in the description and I'm going to pop this up somewhere here just to give you another way to look into that in more details. And another um, good answer here, the person, so we went into the discussion with this person. I said, hey, coaching the PO is literally the role of the Scrum Master. And he said, this is incorrect and I respectfully disagree. If a PO needs a Scrum Master to coach him or her, probably her, he or she was not the right hire in the first place. Again, there might be situations where you just don't have the right hire. It doesn't mean that the person should never be in this role. Think of how smaller teams would sometimes take in maybe a, a developer on the team to become a future Scrum Master. Do they have the skills and knowledge at the very start? Well, of course not. We are not born with those skills. But instead, what it helps to, um, what it means is that we are developing those skills as we go. I think that this particular one is the comment that I disagree with the most because it's really very specific saying coaching the PO is the role of the Scrum Master. It should not be the norm or part of the process. And it is is that's the whole role of the scrum master and i think it's very important to highlight it here we as scrum masters we work with product owners we work with uh, stakeholders and with the team so i understand the concern there uh, because here's what this person says uh, they are not the oracle for the product mere gatekeepers right that's true that is why i'm not telling them what their product is instead i am helping them identify it themselves 
right? I help them make decisions. I'm not making decisions on their behalf. So that's a very important dis distinction here to have. And there is a very, very good reply from one of the people here that the Scrum Master is the resident expert on the team for Scrum slash Agile. Why would they teach and coach the team as the Scrum Guide indicates around the why, what, when, and how of Agile and Scrum? On the Scrum team, the product owner is the resident expert on the product. They exist to align the team around what is most valuable to customer and business. I frame it in a different way. The PO is responsible primarily for the right product. The SM is responsible primarily for the right written. And the devs are responsible primarily for the right way. They are all interrelated dynamics that should be balanced. But the Scrum Master, as having a mastery of Scrum, should be supported just as much as PO, who is articulating the priorities around value. So there are some really good things uh, here, and I really like this comment coming from uh, Christopher. And here is another very good comment here. Everyone can benefit from coaching. You are aware that coaching is not teaching or even mentoring, right? So kind of coming back to that point that I made a bit earlier. Then once again, another comment from here, coaching is not teaching. Yeah, and reply to that saying, yes, exactly. As a Scrum Master, I'm not an expert in the product. I'm just there to direct the product owner to their own decisions. And then John here says, exactly, a coach who doesn't know the topic as well as the coachee can ask legitimately open-ended questions even more easily, right? As something that I mentioned in my previous video, if you have a lot of technical experience, that might actually be damaging to you, right? Because you will be too focused on the details instead of the way those details are actually uh, created or made what the process is you will be focusing on the details of the ask instead of the high level picture now another person who uh, really does not think that scrum master should be po coaching product owners so sm coaching po coaching if a coach can coach for all x it is safe to assume that a has mastery of the most crucial skills and knowledge required in role x knowledge earned through experience Based on whatever I have seen, POs earn more, way more than Scrum Masters. With that, if SM can coach PO and PO earns way more than SMs, why any SM should be keen on to continue as SM? I found this very weird, to be honest, this comment more specifically, because first of all, the pay grade has nothing to do with the role. Um, also, once again, here we are talking about coaching versus mentoring. Right, coaching is not about sharing experiences, mentoring is. Coaching is about asking questions and directing the person. And another important point here, even as a Scrum Master, also a reminder to all of you, you would need to work with people who are higher than you on the in the hierarchy of the organization, who earn more than you. You will work with executives, with stakeholders, uh, with managers of teams, directors, team leads, and you need to be able to communicate with them and coach them on how to be better leaders, how to be more effective how to be agile, right? Um, and this difference in the pay grade definitely should not be a reason to not interact with others or to not share some of the possible improvements that can help them get better. So definitely an important point here. And this is something that I also said um, general in my comment. Here is a really good one uh, talking about a bit of the skills kind of what the product owner should know. So the Scrum Masters can teach the mechanics of the process to a new product owner, but real and effective product ownerships is far beyond the items I have listed in my post. A few things that come to mind are the domain business of the product, stakeholder dynamics in the organization, understanding of the customer needs and what really is valuable for them in their context. So I have mentioned those items and just name them differently. But yeah, that is very important. And I agree with this comment 100%. So the product ownership is far beyond just knowing the, the practices and having the knowledge. It's much more than that. There are more soft skills associated with how you approach your role. 
coming back to that decision making discussion. So all of these things obviously are important. And um, that is a very good point here, right? We can teach the person all of the basic practices, but they need to continue to work on them to be able to be more successful, obviously. Another good comment here saying sometimes people can coach uh, Scrum Masters. I wanted to just highlight this one because exactly, say we have a really good Scrum team, a good PO developers who have been working on Scrum teams, they understand how it works, and they have a junior Scrum Master, someone who is still new to the role. Well, why shouldn't they coach this new Scrum Master on how they can be more successful? They can even share their experiences from previous teams, um, maybe positive practices that their previous Scrum Masters used. So I think that is absolutely okay for product owner to help the Scrum Master, same as the Scrum Master working with developers, developers working with the Scrum Master, coaching the Scrum Master on how the Scrum Master can be more effective and more helpful to the team. So it's not one way around and it definitely doesn't highlight or say that someone is higher on the hierarchy or is more of an expert in something. All about collaboration, working together and helping the whole Scrum team succeed. Another very interesting um, comment here and a different perspective that I really appreciate uh, says the Scrum Master like a master craftsman has mastered all the aspects of Scrum in order to master it. That means they have had to play a role in the development team for a time. They would also have had to play in the product ownership space. Only then could they say that they have mastered Scrum. It's a very interesting position. Uh, I can't say that I agree with that. It definitely can be very helpful to understand each role. I would say I definitely recommend Scrum Masters to go for product ownership training, for professional agile leadership training, because this is where you learn more about the, those other roles in the Scrum team that will help you coach those people right, and work with them more effectively. I think I can actually agree with that to an extent. And uh, what I mean is say the Scrum Master had to play a role in the development team for a time. I think what people immediately think about when they hear that is, well, they should be a developer. So they need to have a development background. Well, not all of these Scrum teams are technical. Not all of the expert expertise on the Scrum team is technical. We might have many different experts in one Scrum team. So our developers might be software engineers, they might be um, architects, they might be QAs, testers, maybe technical writers, or just a design UX. There are many, many different aspects of product development. So it means that a Scrum Master, having had this experience being part of a Scrum team, can be very helpful because you start to understand what kind of challenges people on a Scrum team have when they work with the Scrum Master or the product owner. And that way you will be able to coach your developers much better you, if you have this experience. So it's more about the experience of being a developer, but not necessarily an experience of being a software engineer. I hope you see the difference between the two, right? And in the same product ownership space, Obviously, having uh, some experience that is related to that product owner role, going back to stakeholder management, making decisions, prioritization, uh, product backlog management, all of those things definitely can be part of it too. I actually talked myself into agreeing with this position as I was talking about it. I think that there is just we might mean it to a different extent. I have so many comments on this post. That's crazy. Uh, here is a very good one that I really like this comment. There are probably points on which Scrum Master and product owner need to make sure they have alignment on and gradually address them if the alignment is missing. 100%. So we need to create alignment. We collaborate together. So that obviously would include the developers as well. The whole Scrum team needs to be aligned on all of those, those items. So I really like this one. Very good uh, comment here. 
And then to kind of summarize in the end, I think that's a very good comment here. I like this list, but be aware it will never be complete. And that is true. There are just the list I mentioned and I, I have there is just really a start. We're trying to identify what would be the bare minimum, the core skills knowledge of practices and tools that a product owner needs. So if you have a brand new product owner on the team, or if you are a brand new product owner, what would be those skills and knowledge that you would need to get started? Right? In the same way that I talk about those skills and knowledge in my Scrum Master Startup Guide, and in my Scrum Master Action Week. So as I talk about these there, it's the same thing for the product owners and why I believe that I can look into that in more detail, why I can give you more ideas on how to coach product owners is first, I have worked with new product owners who needed my coaching because they didn't know what the role is. And then I have worked with some very good and experienced product owners. So I was able to learn from them during that experience. And then one more thing is that as uh, the owner and the founder of Scrum Mastered, I am a product owner for Scrum Mastered. So I do need to make those decisions. My stakeholders might not be the same type of stakeholders that you have in a big organization, but I kind of rely on my experience as a Scrum Master um, working with stakeholders previously. And then I do need to prioritize. I do need to cut off some of the work and make decisions. So a lot of the things that I needed to do myself for Scrum Master or for different products I launched, they are 100% related with the role of the product owner. And I'm just sharing my experiences here as well. So once I get this guide ready, I will put it into uh, my store, of course, and then I'm going to send an email and announce it as usual. So if you're interested in being there and getting some good discounts and offers when the guide launches, I recommend you subscribe to my newsletter. The link is in the description. And if you want to, first of all, look more into the Scrum Master role itself, I have lots of resources that you can rely on, such as the Scrum Master Startup Guide, Action Week for Scrum Masters, and the Action Plan for Scrum Masters. So I'm going to link all of those in the description below so that you can go and check them out. And uh, that kind of summarizes everything I wanted to talk about in this video. What do you think? What are some of the skills and knowledge a Scrum Master needs? You have some new ideas and things that I'm missing and we should add to that list. Link them down in the comments. And if you like this kind of content, remember to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers and scrum on.